Lovely to be able to sit down and talk with you. Yeah, lovely to speak with you. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, do you want to just uh, introduce yourself and say who you are? Sure, yeah. I'm uh, Emer Kinsella. Um, I'm from Dublin, Ireland, composer, violinist, um, composer for film and TV, different projects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the accent, when did you leave Dublin? Ireland? The accent's <laughs> definitely gone back. <laughs> yeah, I left when I was 18 uh, and then I moved, moved around Europe, uh, first to London and then uh, like Austria and Germany and then over to the States. So I guess I lost it quickly. <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> disappeared somewhere across Germany. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, and uh, you say you're a musician composer. How did you get into music in the first place? Then uh, I started playing the violin at the age of two, two and wow. a half. Yeah. So kind of grew up with <laughs> music being <Wow. laughs> yeah, part of my identity. And uh, yeah, my mom found a violin teacher who took on students at an early age. So that's how I began. And um, yeah, it was then I went to the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London when I was eighteen. Um, for violin performance and um, yeah I kind of discovered composition there uh, taking electives media composition and electronic music so that's kind of started my love for adding music to visual imagery mm. yeah two <laughs> yeah. that's insane <laughs> I've met two year olds How that? <laughs> wow that's impressive um, so uh, you, you've been um, storing uh, as well as playing on various different things, but uh, yeah. the composition stuff at the moment, uh, In Orbit was, was one of the things which uh, won the uh, Best LGBT at the European Cinematography Awards, which is yeah. awesome. So, uh, um, do you want to just talk a little bit about In Orbit and your work on that? Um, sure, yes. Yeah. So um, I got to work with Irish director Katie McNeese on, on that film. Um, so, um, yeah, it was just over the last year. Um, it's gotten into various Irish film festivals, like the Galway Film Flat and the Cork Film Festival. I got to go back to Ireland for a little bit to see it in the Cork Film Festival. Nice. And um, it's it's won some awards at a festival in Chile. Oh, cool. Yeah, I won actually a Best Score Award there. Um, and then where you mentioned, um, so it's been making its rounds in the festivals, which is great. And it's kind of starting to come over to the U S as well festivals. So hopefully we'll just keep getting into more festivals. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, working on, on that, um, it was a great co collaboration with Katie. Um, yeah, it's like, um, an introspective kind of story. It's, um, kind of seeing the main character who, who sees the, the world kind of from, an outside view like she's like an, feels like an outsider in life um even though she's an um optician an optician yeah. <laughs> yeah but she has to learn how to kind of see feel like she's on the inside of things um yeah. so it's kind of about a relationship that opens her eyes up to kind of love and and being able to open herself up to emotion um but yeah it was great to be able to explore musically um that kind of that kind of film yeah, so yeah. when you start with uh, the, the ta are you tackling like the characters specifically and writing themes through that, or are you, are you writing just gen more generally? Um, it's a mixture. Um, sometimes it might be more of a focus on the characters. Um, this one was a bit more about, I focused kind of on concepts like loneliness and isolation. Mm -hmm. So I built my themes around those words, and um, Katie was great about descriptive imagery with first with her words even before she shot the film so I was playing around with um, those descriptions first and I really caught on to that um, idea of loneliness and isolation and even just the rhythms of those words kind of influenced the score um, and then yeah then as the, with the character development it was kind of about which of the two worlds that the main character is kind of living in it was the one in the present and then in the past. And the past is more like a, an, a, a different world. Uh, it's more like, um, like a magical kind of magical world, but it's also more haunting than in the present. So yeah, I kind of use this juxtaposition of the two, the two time periods and the two different worlds to, to play with the music. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is that mainly, um, violin led or, or, um, 
Yeah, I, I mix it with some um, some light synths and electronics, um, but it's that one's mainly a string score, so it's it's layered with strings. Um, there's some moments where I was able to play with textures and um, kind of create a climax with with uh, manipulating the the sounds of the strings as well. Um, so yeah, that one's kind of heavily string based, um, but there are there are there are kind of different different sounds I'm able to bring at different times. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, one of the other things you worked on was the Saint Louis uh, Superman as well, which uh, you played on. Yeah, I played violin and viola on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, Oscar was Oscar nominated yeah. as well. Uh, it's an incredible story. How did you get involved working on that? Um, well, I've played um, violin and viola for another composer, Amanda Jones, for various projects of hers, um, and that's she was the composer on that film. Right. Um, so yeah, it was it was great to to be involved in that film, and I got yeah I got to see a screening of it with uh, the director and producer and the the main uh, Bruce, the, the the main protagonist, um, and his and him talk about his story. So that that was really that was really great um, just to kind of see it. Bring them, bring it here to LA, and, and watch it. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, because I mean, he he's actually a rapper, isn't he? But yeah, um, so so I mean, there is a sort of musical element in there, even though that's not entirely what the film is about. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I love rap and like watching like Eminem and rap battles. So yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, great film to be to be part of because it has that aspect to it. Um, yeah. yeah, I love the fact that he, he describes um, being a sort of state representative as being basically like being in a rap. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you've you've worked on a number of TV and film projects as well as uh, Sensei was one thing you were involved yeah. in playing, and you did some arranging on that. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, this. Um, which is, is a hugely beloved series. Despite, I mean, I, as I show by the fact that Netflix had to make an extra bit of it <laughs> yeah. Can, so. yeah yeah it was great working on that with uh with johnny Climac, who's done when i was a teenager i was a huge fan of of his work and uh he's worked on like run all the run and cloud atlas and then yeah. co- coming to la to get to work with him on on sense eight and uh also the film jungle which has daniel radcliffe in it um, right yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that was great, and just yeah, Sense Eight is such an incredible story. Yeah, it is it is a pity that they they had to cancel it, but yeah, yeah, yeah I yes, that's <laughs> that's one of the things that's definitely gone down as a black mark against Netflix. I think <laughs> yeah. a lot of the fans when that that got canned. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting project though, and, and being able to do arrangement work on on something like that. One of the one of the interesting things you use is the amount of different things that you get involved with at different various levels yeah. it's not only sort of playing on stuff it's then composing your own stuff as well uh, the Shazam and Hellboy you were down as a music production assistant so what what that involve? Oh, I, I got to uh, work at Re- Remote Control Productions for, for a while and um, I was just around Ben Walfish at that time while he was working on those films just um, kind of helping him uh, out as I could um, but it was yeah, mainly kind of being around uh Various various different people at the time, and um, getting to yeah, kind of getting an inside view on on like big blockbuster films like that was great. Um, so yeah, he's he's great to work with. Um, and at, yeah, Handsomer's place, you're just around a lot of different people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What we refer to as Zimmer Elves. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the there's so many people going through Handsomer's thing. It's it's crazy. Um, yeah. The, uh, it's a great place to pick up and learn stuff, though. I mean, yeah. I, I guess working in a lot of different areas of the industry is, is good for just yeah. understanding. The yeah, understanding process. how everything comes together and just, yeah, kind of seeing all the different components, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the different people involved. Um, you do uh, immersive live music? Um, do you y- want to just explain that? Yeah, I create my own um, immersive concerts as well. So, uh, yeah, I started doing that when I lived in Vienna and Austria, and I came came up with the idea of um, having musicians playing out of windows. And <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, and I had a, so a lighting designer who came up with uh, the lighting design to go with the concert, and basically the audience were allowed to walk around the building and experience the music from, from different angles and perspectives. And then last summer in L.A., I took a... The similar site-specific idea to the top of the Baldwin Hill Scenic Overlook in Culver City, 
Um, yeah, so I kind of brought the audience up this hiking trail and then they were able to explore different spots of musicians. Um, and then that led to a main performance at sunset. And I incorporated um, a few different com film composers' music that we, we performed and performed some of my score from In, in Orbit as well. Um, and then we added a component of virtual reality that you could try on headsets <laughs> during the pre-performance. Um, yeah, so it's kind of about these experiential concert experiences um, yeah. yeah so I, yeah I put them I like to put them together in different locations yeah that's um, that's a brilliant idea I've seen that, that done with you know people doing things like Shakespeare and, and they'll go to particular locations and, and do the performance at like castles or you know in, in different places yeah I, I love the idea of doing the concert and you sort of move around right yeah it's lovely <laughs> so yeah are you doing more of those have you got more of those then um not right now. Um, probably going to be fundraising for another one. Um, but um, yeah, that was a, a very successful one that I put on last summer. Um, took a lot of work, so um, takes takes quite a bit of time to organize. So not, there's not one planned right now, um, but there will be another one in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that sounds fascinating. Um, so in, in terms of uh, writing music, when you first starting on something is, you know you've been playing violin since you're two years old is that the thing that you go to to, to start or, or do you does it sort of depend on what it is um it depends yeah I, I often like to kind of start with some ideas on my violin um or on the piano and then often like some some ideas will kind of click and connect when I also take my violin and then maybe I won't I might not use that but then it get it kind of gets the, the flow going um, but uh, yeah I, it's a, a mixture some some pieces you know I don't use my violin at all on it but um, then it's just creating all the sounds and using the electronics and everything uh, but yeah I definitely like having the physical instrument to be able to, to try out ideas as well yeah yeah no I, I, I guess depending on the project you, you're using mixtures of sort of live instrument I mean presumably if it's got strings in it, in it you're playing it yourself but I uh, then do you, are you using samples as well to sort of enhance bits and pieces? Yeah, of yeah. Tragedy? Yeah, it'll be a mixture of samples and uh, live sounds and samples and manipulated uh, electronics and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. Do you, are you one of these people that collects slightly stranger instruments? Is there anything that you kind of have used on something or would like to kind of get in there and hit someone? Um, more unusual instruments. It's usually, I might just try unusual like recording techniques of maybe do, doing a sound with, with my, my voice right. or, or like knocking on a door and trying to create, a, you know, something out of that. Um, in terms of instruments, I'm trying to think. Um, no, I usually kind of stick with strings. Maybe I'll take a guitar and tr just try a sound and just kind of create something mm -hmm. unusual out of it. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of mostly whatever sound comes to mind then creating a new sound out of it. <laughs> yeah. um, what would you say has been the most interesting experience you've had since you started working in this industry? Most interesting? Um, it's hard to say. Um, I guess every project has, you know, a different challenge or something to figure out. Um, what's the most interesting? Should have something off the top of my head. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess kind of res responding to different directors. You know, um, yeah. yeah we're, when I'm working on my own films, kind of getting inside the head of the, head of the director and figuring out uh, what they're looking for, as well as finding out kind of what works totally with the film. Um, so I think every experience you get, I get to delve into those concepts and ideas and kind of bring, bring in an internal voice to the, to the music to add to, to whatever's on the screen. Um, so yeah, kind of every, every film is different in that way. And I think that's probably the most, the most interesting kind of the collaboration with, with the director and finding out really what's, what's deep within the concept. Um, probably. <laughs> um, I, I know this is, can be a bit like asking you to pick a child, but uh, what's the one thing you've done that you've been most proud of working on? Or most proud of the result? 
of the risks. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, I mean, I was probably coming back to Sense Eight. It was mm-hmm. was was a pretty proud moment to be involved with that. Um, and then uh, getting to yeah, getting to record my own stuff for uh, strings and so forth in orbit um, and working with an engineer. It kind of, the collaboration is also with the different elements is great. Um, so recently probably in orbit, just yeah. how that came out. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, what are you doing next? Is there anything you talk about? Um, yeah, I'm starting to work on a feature film called She the Creator. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, that's kind of about um, someone with internal struggles, uh, kind of losing losing her mind over time. So that'll be an interesting one to play with. Yeah. It's sound, like soundscapes internally. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I can yeah. see that. That must be. That's going to be really interesting. Um, so the last couple of questions for you. Uh, they're always TV related, um, which I know you've been doing many films and stuff. But because the, the site I work for covers a lot of TV, I always throw TV questions in. So uh, the first one will be: What TV shows are you watching at the moment? Oh, <laughs> um, the, I've been following The Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Well, yeah, the, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, every season's a little different. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Handmaid's Tale. Um, what else am I on? Uh, recently, oh, so many, and I was going through my head. Um, one of my favorites recently, in terms of on Netflix, I've been watching like Dark. Oh yeah, yeah. That the, the German show. Mm. So that, that that I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good good show. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you had the opportunity to work on any TV show, it can be something from the past, something present, or some sort of future genre. What would it be? Um. Hmm. Um. Let's try, probably something like. Orphan Black. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something, yeah, kind of unusual and mm. um, drama, you know, drama TV shows I love. Also, maybe like Daredevil on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great I'm, show. Yeah, a fan of too, kind of being able to sculpt the sounds and kind of go dark with it too. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe those kind of shows. Yeah. 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 You get points for picking up from black. That's a phenomenal yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's been lovely to be able to sit and chat to you. Um, yeah, and, you and too. Really, really nice. Good luck with, uh, with the new uh, feature film and uh, Thank you. I hope it does great things as well. So, uh, yes. Yeah, great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>